Chairman, I appreciate, it. I appreciate the witness has taken time to come in and uh, deal with these serious issues. Uh, I'll start first and foremost. I want to go through a series of questions here, so I'm going to start with Ms O'Keefe. Ms O'Keefe, I understand that you're soon to depart uh, the service in the uh, uh, Department of Transport. I hope you don't feel you're being thrown under the bus today. Uh, I wonder, could you confirm for me that the Department of Transport does not have any internal expertise in the area of aviation. I understand you advertised for um, an aviation expert and that advertisement uh, closed in December of last year and you still have not appointed an aviation expert. With respect to the maps that were used by um, CHC, um, I understand that those maps were scanned uh, in order to feed into the navigation system and from what I can understand the scanning left a couple of inches short which left out black Black Rock Island uh, when it scanned into the system. I want to know who was responsible for the oversight there. Would you accept that today, from a statutory point of view, the Irish Aviation Authority, the IAA, has no statutory obligations with respect to SAR and that that is part of the forthcoming um, Air Navigation and Transport Bill? Um, Finally, uh, just uh, for the families, um, I, I, I believe now that the families should be encouraged to um, take legal advice as to which jurisdiction they will go to in order to resolve the loss of their loved ones. There are families that have been left without an income as a result of what has happened here. Um, I do believe that all agencies involved, both the Department of Transport, the um, uh, Irish Coast Guard and the Irish Aviation Authority all need to ref reflect no attribution of blame. Because that's no, I'm not, I'm not making any blame whatsoever. Now, with respect to the Coast Guard, um, I have here a list of what I would call a damning list of the, uh, what's been going on in the Coast Guard. 2014, an accident in Inch. In inch. The uh, Marine Casualty Investigation Board report not uh, uh, produced. The Kilkee tragedy, I understand people are telling me in Kilkee that they were warning that there was the likelihood of a fatality um, because of lack of uh, Coast Guard management listening to them. With respect to the crash of Rescue 116, um, the personal locator beacons apparently did not work when the crew went into the water. Um, again, back to Miss O'Keefe for a moment. I'm trying to understand why the Irish Exchequer paid a private company seven and a half million euros to um, uh, retrofit their cockpits of their helicopters to buy uh, night vision navigation which I, and goggles, which I understand are still the position of the Coast Guard, and why that training is not completed today, um, almost eight years later. Uh, I, I would like to know that. Going on on the personal location beacons, that was 2017. 2020 is judgment against Ireland because the Marine Casualty Investigation Board did not conform uh, with the independence requirement. Uh, scrutiny, again, um, a failure of oversight. Captain Steve Clinch's um, review, um, that report, I understand, has not been published. Um, the Controller and Auditor General, two reports from the Controller and Auditor General, absolutely damning. Now, with respect to uh, yourself, Mr. Clonan, you say that your um, trainees are trained, come in as, as, as probationers, and are trained to a standard. How is that standard certified? Who certifies it? What agency certifies it? Um, with respect to the allegations of bullying, and, of bullying and harassment, you say that you have the Coast Guard code. You said you uh, engaged with the GAA on the drafting of that code with respect to volunteers. Uh, can you tell me, did you um, engage with the volunteers themselves? Did you bring volunteers together and run that code by them? Dispute resolution. Where, where there's a dispute, full-time members of the Coast Guard have access to legal service. Have volunteers got an access to legal, legal service? And do you know, can they avail of the Workplace Relations Committee um, when, when uh, it, it comes to a, a dispute? Uh, going back to um, uh, my colleagues' questions on the Coast Guard Advisory Group, 
Um, the, the advisory group is not a representative group. I come from a trade union background myself, and if you want, an, if you want a representative group, then that representative group has to be something like the Irish Coast Guard Volunteers Group that has come together now, that will be recognised by a, a trade union or a, an employee representative body. And whether we like it or not, sooner or later you're going to have to engage with them. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I do understand, Mr Clonan, that you have always been willing to engage with volunteers. I do understand that. And the question I have for you now is who is stopping you in engaging with that particular group? If they approach you as a representative group, as the acting um, uh, director of the Coast Guard, will you engage and negotiate? with them and try and resolve the issues that are there. And back to Ms O'Keefe, why is Mr Clonan still an acting director? Why hasn't he been appointed uh, to a permanent post in the organisation? Um, listen, uh, I deeply respect the work you do, but you need to be engaging with volunteers. And one of, one of the clear examples where you're not engaging with volunteers, as outlined in the CNAG's report on the purchase of um, vehicles, it is clear from that um, report that there was no engagement with volunteers, and that's simply not good enough. Volunteers, as you well know, have to feel they are part of the family, have to feel that they have a voice, and I believe a lot of what we're looking at today is because there is a lack of a voice. Do remember, and I would ask you to pass it on to your people, bullying and harassment, and specifically bullying, is an offence against the person. And at some stage, somebody will take an action against uh, your organisation. You're only one man, and you're here in the hot seat, and I feel somewhat for you today. But you've answered your questions well. You've defended your organisation. I'd like you to get out on the ground and fix the problems that are there. I do believe there's a commitment from you to do that, and I'd like you to do it and do it urgently. And if there's something impeding that from your point of view, come back to this committee and we will work on it. Chairman? Obviously, in terms of roles and that, that's private, not to be discussed here today, in terms of your, your both or your respective roles. But can you just deal, can you just deal with the, the specific issues of... Um, I suppose the noble book with Senator Crocker is if you have a representative body established and we've yet to receive the have you been able to locate yes. the terms of yes. you able to print it and circulate it? The, why if you have a representative group that comes together, why would you not recognise that representative group? Like the, the Irish Coast Guard Volunteers Association has been formed. I have a representative group, it's the Coast Union Advisory Group. And they're, not, and they're more than a representative group because they're engaged in advising us and working with us on operations, Who appoints equipment. Them? They do. I don't appoint them. And they come together and they represent each of the functions. So are they appointed by the volunteers? Yeah. Well, there that... lies the problem. If you have two, two separate groups within the organisation that are trying to uh, establish two separate representative groups, then you have a serious problem. Well, I have, one, I have one group within the organisation for the last 20 years, and it, as I said, it's more than a representative association. Representative associations unions don't deal with management and operations and, and, and purchase of equipment and all that, but this representative group does. We're, we're joined at the hip, as I said earlier. The, I think the issues we have here are, maybe, maybe are, are Mr. grievances. Fona, maybe, maybe that's the problem. Yeah, it's the the issue, it's, at the hip. Maybe it, that it, is it, the problem. But, but there are people voted by, their, by, by the volunteers to represent them in all aspects from equipment, PPE, the way they do their business, the stuff we buy. So the CNAG says that you did not engage with volunteers. That, on that particular issue, yeah, okay. back but in 2014. Then, I mean, if, if that's one example, if we, if we examine more, we'll find more. I mean, it's clear. Yeah. Transport was purchased that was totally and utterly yeah. unsatisfactory. Well, well, uh, what and we do is, at the beginning of the year is sit down with the Curry and go through the plans of the purchases and of, of what, and the services we're, we're delivering and the, and the opportunity there is oh, you're buying this or you're doing this or you're doing that and, and they're fully engaged in it. They, Mr. They, Mr. They, Clonan, they, yeah. with, with your respect, I, 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 think, I think it's... I've, I've read the CNAG report, as yeah. have other members. That was unfortunate. Mind you, you know. And it was... It, once it was below half a million, it didn't have to go out 
it could be done through the Coast Guard itself, and it was €160,000 of a contract. And that contract miraculously ended up becoming $1.4 million. So, therefore, when it was put out for public tender, it was an estimate value of 160000 So, therefore, it, didn't, it wasn't required, a business case wasn't required to go to the department. And yet it went to $1.4 million. Was that ever approved by the department? So, the the CNAG report is accurate and factual, and it's, it's, it does not make... I mean, what it says is... The department did not get value for money or anything near it. But, but, but with your respect, Mr. Cron, yeah. how did that happen? How did you get a situation whereby you put out a tender for €160,000, which didn't require any business case to go to the department, and that suddenly ballooned up into a £1.4 million contract that never got department approval? How did that happen? How in the name of God did that happen? within the Irish Coast Guard. And like we can talk and we talk about corporate changes and whatever, right? I was on the PSC. That's as damning a report as I've seen. Crazy. Okay? And you have held your hand. But the question is how did it happen? How? The procedures weren't followed. May I come in, Chairperson, yeah. at this point? Would it be helpful? If you'd like to, yes, Ms. Ms. Yes, I, yeah, th th thanks very much. Um, the, the report which the CNAG did recently in relation to, to, to those vehicles um, is, is, is as, as Eugene has said, is, is fairly damning. It, it relates to something that happened in 2014. Uh, the, the, the recommendations of the report we are holding up our hands to, and and uh, uh, we can't we can't uh, we can't really say there's anything wrong with the recommendations in the report. We're accepting the recommendations in the report, and we're going to implement them. Uh, prior to the publication of the report, the department had been in the process of strengthening its corporate governance in the area of procurement, and this involved aligning. Uh, I mean, Ms. O'Keefe, Ms. O'Keefe, I'm sorry, yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry now. We have only one question here. How did it happen? It's all very well saying you're changing systems, right? We're, we have a fiduciary duty as public representatives to get value for money for the public purse. Two things happened here. It was put out for tender for 160 grand, so it didn't have to go to any business case to the department. And then it ballooned up by nearly 10 times to 1.4 million. And it still didn't get approved from the department. And not only that, the, 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 the trucks that were bought were grossly inadequate, so it fails on every account, right? The question is, and I read the report, I still haven't got an answer from anyone as to how it happened. And Mr Clonan, it was on your watch. You would have been uh, a deputy um, of, uh, chief of the Coast Guard at the time. So how did this happen? I mean, you don't know even at this point, we four have, or five years later. We have, to, we have the report. The, start, the report from the CNAG was 2020. It was brought to our attention by our deviation management system in early 2020. So, so when was the first time the Irish Coast Guard knew about this discrepancy of about... The first time I knew about it was when the deviation management happened in, in early 2020. So you're saying to me... Chairman, somebody in the Coast Guard was speaking about this. You, you go to tender for 100 and odd thousand and suddenly it starts to balloon so surely somebody had to sit down and say lads do you know what we didn't include this and we didn't include that and we need to do this and we need to do that and you were at management level at that time surely to god you sat down and discussed this 1.4 million euro purchase and, 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 and can I ask, has any disciplinary action been taken against anyone in the irish coast guard on foot of this uh stark and appalling revelation no. Why not? As I, as I said, I don't want to make a... Well, for instance, the people that are involved in the procurement and doing the work within the Irish Coast Guard, are they still working in the Irish Coast Guard? I, back in 2014, I, I couldn't be 100%, but I, I, I think so. There may be one or two gone. I'm not sure. With, with due respect, right, this is... 
This is we're, good vote territory. We're, like, this we're, is... We're, very, we're very unhappy. I'm very unhappy with it. The, the CNAG lays us out starkly. And what we're doing now is going well, back well, 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 to... With due respect, Mr. Cohen, yeah. your, your corporate governance and your, your financial systems were sleeping. You didn't know about this until the CNAG brought it to your attention. That meant that this had gone through. The department weren't aware of it. Ms O'Keefe, were you aware of it in the department? I wasn't aware of it, no, at that stage. But what I can say, Chairman, would, if it's any help, be, is that we are, we are taking this extremely seriously in the department. No, 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 that's what I'm real, asking. I, I'm, asking, I'm asking about the fiduciary and the corporate. Were you the Assistant Secretary over this section at that moment in time, Ms O'Keefe? No, I wasn't. Um, I, was, I wasn't. Um, but, but just to note that we are, because of some of the questions that you're now asking, uh, Chairman, we are now um, uh, embarking on another review on the issues raised in the special report and on other related issues. Well, no, but you're, uh, uh, Ms O'Keefe. Yeah. I mean, why did I refer the purchase of vehicles to the Controller and Auditor General? Because people within the service were available or were aware of what had happened and came to me with their complaint. Mm. This is all part of a system that is just broken. Mm. And because I couldn't get answers, I went to the CNAG and said, you have a look at this. And I was absolutely shocked by what came back out of two reports so far from the CNAG. And I have asked for other ones. Mm. I, 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 there, is a, there is a need for... A former disciplinary proceeding. You need to, to do. The question is, how did this happen? Yeah. And on behalf of the volunteers up and down the country, who are we are here today because of them, mm. right? We accept the work you do, and we support you in terms of extra resources. Ironically, Mr. Clunan, the Coast Guard wasted the bones of 1.4 million of the taxpayers' money on something that. Clearly, top management. You weren't aware of. You were there. Okay. So, therefore, it happened at a layer below. Uh, so, the question is, you should. I would have thought at this stage, Mr. Clone, in the department, some form of disciplinary uh, action needs to take place here, forensically, to find out how this happened. It's not good enough to come into us and say, oh, we'll take on board what the CNAG is saying. No. I brought this up today, and in fairness, Senator Crockwell initiated this whole process. But this is damning in terms of the Irish Coast Guard and the fact that even the procedures, Ms O'Keefe, within the department in terms of overseeing what the Irish Coast Guard are doing. Um, what allocation of funding does the Irish Coast Guard get from your department every year, Ms O'Keefe? Well, can, can, I, can I just come back, um, uh, Chairman, on... on um, uh, on, on, on the, the question of the, of the special report. We are taking the special report extremely seriously. We can't answer some of the questions that you have today here um, on, on the special report. We're not, we're, we're not able to do it. And, and, and th those questions are clearly questions that you're asking and that we need to be able Ms. to Ms O'Keefe, that's not answer. good enough. I'm sorry. You are to no, do a job, uh, Brian, and this is I not could personal. Just, I could just say not good that enough. We, are, we are carrying out, this is being taken very seriously at the highest levels within the department, and we are carrying out another review. Uh, uh, we're, we're already carrying that out on the issues raised in the special report, and uh, with, with a view to answering some of the answers. And then the questions. final question I have, Mr. Cronin. These, I think it's 17 vehicles that were purchased. 18. Where are they at the moment? Well, I have to leave that, I think, to uh, Mr. Mr. Clonan to answer. Where are they at but, the but, but, to, to, but to emphasise that we are taking this very seriously and we are carrying out a further review okay. on that report well, with we, a view we, to answering we, we, some of those we'll questions. Be following, we'll be following up on that, Ms O'Keefe. Can I answer? Yeah. Okay. Where, where, where are those 17 vehicles? The procurement process does not stand up to most of you. Yeah. That's just the first thing. We have bought 18 vehicles. The 18 vehicles are for the cliff teams. The cliff teams, to carry their equipment, they also provide a... Facilities for are they in cleaning. operation? They are, yes. All but, of them. But, but this... No, they're not. It's not. No, the, it's can, can I finish? Support. Because it's very important that I get this across. And it's something that has not got out there, if you know what I mean. Cliff teams operate up narrow lanes, and it, not one vehicle will do the job for them. If otherwise, it's a truck, and the truck will not go up the lanes. 
What I need is a, is a mix of vehicles, four by fours, quads, and the vans. It was never. Did you buy them fully um, uh, equipped, or did you buy no. empty vehicles? The contract was to buy the vehicle and get them fitted out. So it was one contract to get all that done and or fitted out. What the, what the thing is with the volunteers, and this is not this is the reason why they should be brought in the beginning. The intention was not to carry all the equipment on the van. You couldn't get them into the van, if, if you know what I mean. The volume, just the van was bought to, to carry, to replace the existing van and also to keep a mix of vehicles. When you're going up the side of a mountain, going up the cliff face, you know, Doolin, you know, the cliffs are over. A truck doesn't do it. You need four by fours, you need um, the quads, and you need a van to carry the, the excess so, equipment. So, so, and, and trailers. So, Mr. Cronin, yeah. you would appreciate it. We are going to come back to this. Yes, absolutely. Furthermore, because the contract was only 160,000, only two people tendered for it because obviously it wasn't seen as in any way uh, a, a beneficial contract. Mm. So you two contractors went in. And by God, it was Christmas time. They certainly had a contract that went from 160 grand up to 1.4 million. And we have to come back to it. So, look. Can I, can I just get an answer from the department on the statutory responsibility of the IAA with respect to search and, aid, search and rescue? Uh -huh. I'll pass that, Chairperson, if you don't mind, to Mr. O'Flaherty. Yeah, Thank that's you. fine, yeah. Sure. Thank, thanks, Deirdre, and thanks, um, Senator, for the question. Um, firstly, to say that the, uh, the IEA uh, is uh, statutorily responsible for issuing air, operations, uh, air operator certificates and, indeed, search and rescue approvals, um, uh, of which there is, there is one, uh, uh, as, you, as you understand, currently for the, um, the operator is currently contra contracted. So, uh, and that covers the aviation sa safety aviation regulation and overs oversight, as well as oversight of the operational responsibility of the, 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 the coordination Sorry, centers. Mr. O'Flaherty, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, want you to, I want you to deal specifically with pre uh, R116 accident. Were the IAA statutorily obliged to oversee the search and rescue operation? Yes or no? They, uh, yes, because um, be, because the the, the role you know, Mr. of uh, issuing air operation uh, certificates I, and no, no, I'm not search and rescue approvals uh, were assigned to the uh, assigned to the IA. I mean, as you're aware, um, Senator, um, uh, some of this is copper fastened in the uh, air uh, navigation and transport uh, uh, bill now and provides for the clarity and indeed some of the some of the um, arrangements that are put in place under the National SAR plan in terms of the, the regulators forum as well ensures that there's greater uh, coordination and, 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 and clarity of, 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 of roles. You need to um, so, so the, um, uh, but, but, you, but yes, I mean, it, the, and indeed they acted in that way, they inspected, they, uh, uh, they received safety cases, uh, they, uh, uh, they, 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 they uh, exercised Exercised oversight in respect of uh, in 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 respect of safety management, um, but the but but this is the the, um, the statutory position around Fatty. this is strengthened uh, in the um, in, in the air navigation and transport there. bill. Mr. Um, Fatty, it that, ensures that's, that's, that when they make yeah. regulations that apply to the Coast Guard, that they uh, that they consult with um, the, the the Coast Guard and consider the public benefit that's, of you need um, to granting Mr. exemptions you need from the standards. Chairman, I, I think we can sum this up by saying Senator, that the current um, bill, the, 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 the air standard, navigation uh, bill, commercial will air, fix this problem. Permissions wouldn't be sufficient to effectively carry out search and rescue operations in the sorts of conditions that they operate in. And there is, and there is. Um, uh, and the department has already been consulted on them. Uh, there are further Mr. draft Mr. regulations. Mr. O'Flaherty, you'll have to conclude, Mr. O'Flaherty. There's greater clarity that the IEA have, uh, uh, have, have developed and have Mr. Um, uh, submitted to, Mr. to, to the department for consultation also. Thanks, Mr. O'Flaherty.